Hearken to the words of Hatshepsut, Lady of the Two Lands, the Good Goddess, and Daughter of Re, Ruler of all Egypt, whose like the Earth has never seen. Her voice issues from her monuments. You who look upon my works, hear me. I have restored ruins and raised up what had been unfinished since the foreign invaders lived in the Delta. I have overthrown the works they built when they ruled the Northland in ignorance of Ray. Never have we known a marvel like Hatshepsut, for she ruled our land for twenty years. Not a consort or queen, but a mighty pharaoh and a woman. King of Upper and Lower Egypt with the royal cobra on her brow. We lack the image for such a wonder, and so we represent her as a male king with a beard and a kilt, and we have come to call her Lord, Good God, and Son of Re. A widowed queen, she ruled as regent for her nephew Menkepere. But in the seventh year, she took the name and offices of king, co-ruler of the land. Our land flourished during her reign, and many and great were her works. For she sent out an expedition of many ships to the land of Punt far to the south along the great green sea and brought back splendid treasures, gold and ivory, ebony and myrrh for the gods of our land. She restored the temples that had been long neglected. Beneath the rugged lime cliffs near Thebes, beside the monument of her great predecessor, Montuhotep, she built her funerary temple broad as the horizon at sun's rising. Hatshepsut's name appears no more after the 22nd year of her co-reign with her nephew. At that time, the king emerged from his apparent obscurity and became a great warrior. You know him as Thutmose, the third to bear that name, the creator of a mighty empire. Some say he hated Hatshepsut. We know that he effaced her name and smashed her images. But Thutmose waited over 20 years to do these things. Hatred does not usually wait so long to lash out. The king's reasons, I fear, are lost forever.